Welcome to a new video which is about solving limit questions in undefined condition 0 divided by 0. I will show you a general strategy to solve such questions and then solve instructive examples related to the subject. If this is your first time here and if you want to support this channel don't forget to subscribe click on the bell to turn on the notifications to be aware of the upcoming videos. We have a lot to cover so let's get started. As we see here guys 0 divided by 0 is one of the undefined conditions and in the limit questions if the case is 0 divided by 0 we need to remove that situation in order to solve the question generally there are three strategies applied to do that uncertainty might be removed by just simplifying the fraction this is the first thing that generally comes to our minds if the fraction has a root expression then this fraction is expanded by the conjugate of the root expression. That is another case that comes to our mind, especially when the fraction has a root in it. It doesn't matter whether it is in the numerator or in the denominator. And as a third thing, the uncertainty can be removed by using trigonometric identities. Of course, if the function has some trigonometric functions. And let's take a look at our first example. It says when x goes to 3, find the limit of x squared minus 5x plus 6 divided by x minus 3. Here, if you put 3 instead of x, let's see what we're going to have. We're going to have 3 squared, which is 9, minus 5 times 3, which is 15, plus 6, divided by 3 minus 3, guys. In the numerator, we're going to have 15 minus 15, which is 0, divided by in the denominator, we're going to have also 0, and as you can see, we have an undefined condition. So we need to remove that undefined condition. The first thing comes to our mind is, especially in such polynomial functions that we have in numerator and denominator, we need to factor the function. For example, let me write on the top right, x squared minus 5x plus 6. How we can factor this? If you remember, I already showed you such cases before. We were factoring the last number, which is 6, like negative 3 times negative 2. If we multiply those numbers, we get positive 6. If we add those numbers up, then we get the number that is in front of x, which is negative 5. That indicates that the whole expression can be written as x minus 3 times x minus 2, guys. So, and the question becomes limit when x goes to 3. I'm going to write the numerator as x minus 3 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 3 guys and now as you can see we have some terms in common in both numerator and denominator so we can just cross them out okay once you simplify the expression then the leftover is limit when x goes to 3 and then we have just x minus 2 left over guys and in this case if you put just 3 instead of x then we got 1 as a result Okay, let's take a look at the next question. Okay, guys, this is our next question, and it says when x goes to 1, what is the limit of 25 to the power of x minus 25 divided by 5 to the power of x minus 5? So let's try to solve the question by just simply plugging 1 in x, and let's see what we're going to have. If you put 1 instead of x, then we're going to have 25 to the power of 1, which is 25, minus 25 divided by... 5 to the power of 1 is 5, so it's going to be 5 minus 5, so as you can see we have 0 divided by 0. And again, we need to simplify the fraction, and there was an algebraic formula, if you remember, that we're going to use that formula, and if you remember, a square minus b square was what? a minus b times a plus b, guys. I definitely recommend you to memorize this formula because you will come across this formula in most of the times, especially in math. So to make the life easier when it comes to solve math questions, definitely recommend you to memorize this formula. Anyway, so how we can write 25 to the power of x minus 25 in this form? Well, we all know that 25 is 5 square. So instead of 25, I'm going to write 5 square. 5 to the power of x square minus instead of 25 i'm gonna write again 5 square so how we can write this well it's gonna be 5 to the power of x minus 5 times 5 to the power of x plus 5 guys so i'm gonna just write this instead of the numerator in our question and then question becomes guys limit when x goes to 1 and then i have a fraction here 
and the fraction is 5 to the power of x minus 5 times 5 to the power of x plus 5 divided by 5 to the power of x minus 5. And now as you can see those terms are gone and then what we have is limit when x goes to 1 we have just 5 to the power of x plus 5 guys. And now if you put 1 instead of x then we're going to have 5 to the power of 1 plus 5 which is 10 guys. So the result is 10 in this case. Let's take a look at the next example. We have a new question and it says find the limit of the square root x plus 7 minus 3 divided by x minus 2 when x goes to 2. Again, if you put 2 instead of x, we're going to have square root of 9, which is 3, minus 3 divided by 2 minus 2, which is 0 divided by 0. In this case, we need to get rid of this undefined condition. Okay, we need to make a simplification or apply one of those three strategies. And in this question, guys, we're going to apply the second strategy here. Root part that we have square root of x plus 7 minus 3. So I'm going to take the conjugate of this and apply both numerators and denominators by that number. Before continuing, we need to understand what is a conjugate, okay? For example, if we say a minus b, the conjugate of this is a plus b, guys. This is not equal. The conjugate of square root of x plus 7 minus 3 is what? I'll just change that minus and make it plus, guys. So it's going to be square root of x plus 7 plus 3. So I'm going to multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of x plus 7 plus 3, guys. So when I rewrite the question, the question becomes square root of x plus 7 minus 3 divided by x minus 2, guys, times. And I'm going to multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of, let me write it here, x plus 7 plus 3 times the same thing in the denominator. And now as you can see, I multiply both numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the numerator that we have in the question. And once we do it, the numerator part becomes, okay, suppose that the root part is a and the number 3 is b. So the question is something like a minus b times a plus b. And as just we saw, this is equal to what? a square minus b square. And again, I definitely recommend you to memorize this, guys, definitely, this algebraic equation, because you will run into cases that you will have to use that formula. And so this is going to be equal to, guys, the square of a. So it's going to be square root x plus 7, square of this, minus square of 3, divided by, okay, I just erased it a little to put the limit when x goes to 2 part here also. And now, write down the denominator part. So it's going to be x minus 2 times in the square root x plus 7 plus 3. Now, if you take the square of that root, the root is gone. If you take the square of, okay, let me write the numerator here. The numerator is going to be x plus 7 minus 9, so it's going to be x minus 2, guys. And that x minus 2 will cancel this x minus 2. So I'm going to write the left over here. And now if you put 2 instead of x, we're going to have 1 divided by square root of 9 is 3, 3 plus 3. So this is going to give us 1 divided by 6, guys. And now as you can see, the answer is 1 divided by 6 in this case. In this question, we use the second strategy. Let's take a look at our next question. Okay, guys, this is our last question in this video. Let me write down the formula that I used in the previous example. So a square minus b square can be written as a minus b times a plus b, guys. I'll use this formula also in this question. First of all, if you put pi divided by 4 instead of x, then let's see what we're going to have. We're going to have sine pi divided by 4 square, right? So sine of pi divided by 4. Actually, instead of writing pi divided by 4, we can write 45 degree, right? Minus cosine 45 degree squared. These are square, by the way. So divided by sine 45 degree minus cosine 45 degree. We all know that sine 45 degree is square root of 2 divided by 2, right? So if you take the square of square root of 2 divided by 2, then we're going to have 2 divided by 4 minus the same thing, guys. Again, cosine 45 is also square root of 2 divided by 2. So once you take the square of it, then we're going to have 
2 divided by 4 also divided by 2 square root of 2 divided by 2 minus square root of 2 divided by 2 and as you can see in the numerator we're going to have 0 divided by in the denominator we're going to have also 0 so this is also one of the undefined conditions 0 divided by 0 and again we need to simplify this how we can simplify it well we're going to use that formula definitely the formula that I just put here so we're going to have limits and I'm going to write the numerator as sine x minus cosine x times sine x plus cosine x divided by sine x minus cosine x guys and now as you can see these are gone so we have just sine x plus cosine x left over and once you put pi divided by 4 then we're gonna have sine pi divided by 4 or 45 degree the same thing guys 45 degree plus cosine 45 degree as well sine 45 degree is what square root of 2 divided by 2 plus cosine 45 degree is also square root of 2 divided by 2 and that gives us 2 square root of 2 divided by 2 if you cross out these and then the leftover is square root of 2 guys the final answer is square root of 2 if you have any questions you can put them in the comment section below thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the upcoming videos